So what is going on everybody? Thanks for tuning in to my next episode. So this is going to be a quick video. Uh, what I wanted to do was help out uh, my cruise people. So even though I do have a car collection, I have a bunch of V8s, a bunch of manuals. This is my 2017 cruise. I have this car because everybody needs a daily. You know, it gets good gas mileage and it actually fits my kids really well. Um, however, even though it is my daily driver, I can't leave it alone. So I'm one of the few people that modify these and I also noticed that a lot of people who try and modify them just don't know where to go and what to do because the car is too new. Uh, what I'm going to be doing today is showing how I installed my boost gauge. The firewall on these cars are pretty much a nightmare to get through and the uh, where, to, where you would traditionally get a boost and vacuum signal. Um, for example, if you have a Generation 1 cruise, you can tap in right behind the turbocharger. On this car, if you tap in behind the turbocharger, the problem is you won't get a vacuum reading. Um, and the boost gauge, or the boost waste gauge is controlled by the computer, not boost and vacuum. So there is vacuum there, but there's a computer controlled um, sensor. So sometimes you get a boost reading, sometimes you don't. So what I'm going to do is show you how I got a true reading. And first things first, let's start inside the car. So here's the inside of my car. For starters, for starters, um, just to let you know, if you want to power your boost gauge right under here, if you pull from underneath, I'll turn my light on right in this fuse location is where I tapped in to get power. It gives you a 12 volt source and then you can power any gauge you want. Um, I like it, it's a perfect spot. It also is uh, switch controlled. So if you turn the, if you turn the uh, boost gauge on, actually, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Right here is also where you could tap in. So one of these, I don't remember offhand, one of these is a switch source, one of these is a battery source, but that's how I ran my gauge. Um, up here, you can see I have a glow shift gauge. Um, it's a nice gauge. I'll show you what it looks like. I like this gauge because you can change it. At night, I have red. Let me shut my light off. At night, I use red because it dims down. It, it also auto dims. Um, but at night, the red actually is uh, really dim for me. Um, you'll see here that let me brighten these gauges up. It does have a setting that uh, looks pretty much like the OEM, which is why I ended up going with this gauge. Um, and it was like, you know, the pod and the gauge together were like, uh, I want to say 150 bucks. Um, so what I did was, let me get my light back on, was I ran those wires underneath this panel and straight up. And you can pull this panel off right here. This panel pops off. I grounded my gauge here and I ran all my wires up through here, including my boost tube. And then here is where the pod pops in. So I had to drill a hole back here. Hopefully you guys can see that. But I drilled the hole right through the air duct to come to be able to come underneath and run everything. So it's a good spot. Um, and then what I had to do was underneath the car, or I'm sorry, underneath the dash. Now, if you have an automatic, um, you can use where the clutch linkage should be going through the firewall. But if you have a manual, like I do, um, I had to drill a hole. So if you look right there, this is actually my boost hose. And I drilled the hole. If you can drill a hole in pretty much the same spot on a manual uh, and get through the firewall, I'll show you on the other end where it comes through. So, right here, if you remove this washer fluid tank, it pops up out of the way. And you see this strut tower. Behind this strut tower, when you drill that hole, the vacuum hose, you can pull up and pull through. You're going to have to feel for it with your hand. There's really nowhere to show. But when you reach behind this strut tower towards the bottom, you can literally feel if you drilled high enough and fed the line through, you can feel where it came through. Now, what I suggest is um, send like a clothes hanger through, electrical tape it to your um, 
whatever hose you're going to use and then pull that through and then that'll come up behind and that's the easiest way to do it. But if you have an automatic where this clutch pedal is, you can pretty much drill a hole right th where the slave cylinder used to be and, uh, and get all of your stuff through the firewall. But if you have a manual, there's pretty much no way to get anything through this firewall. What I was saying, I just wanted to shut my light down, was if you have a manual version of a cruise, there is no way to get through the firewall. There is so much sound deadening and so many components that uh, pretty much every spot of real estate that is usable on the firewall is used by something. Uh, this is a pretty tight packed car up front. I think the reason it's like that is for uh, cabin space probably. So I'm gonna show you under the hood. Give me Took me a second to remember how to pop the hood. Uh, am I the only one that thinks GM is ridiculous with having to have to pull the lever to open the hood twice? I, I think that's a dumb design. I really wish they still had the lever here. So here we are. This is the Generation 2 Cruise Ecotech. Um, you're going to see on here a bunch of different lines. Like, for example, right here. Um, you're going to think, oh, let me cut these, let me test them. Each one of these lines that you can easily get to do not produce any kind of vacuum or boost. Now, they may at some point, because if you see, they have different sensors that are hooked into them. Um, so, what did I, so what do you do? Well, you know, if you come from the Generation 1 Cruise world, the Generation 1 Cruise in the back here has a hose that goes to the wastegate actuator. Um, that hose... I figured, hey, let me tap into it. Well, when I tapped into it, yes, I got a boost reading, but the boost reading that I got um, sometimes read boost, sometimes didn't, and it's because it's computer controlled, and being computer controlled, it pretty much does what it wants. So what I had to do was I picked up one of these, a T fitting, and then if you look back here, this line right here has vacuum on it. Um, now, in this area, it does not have vacuum, so do not cut the line here. The line, if you follow it with your hand, goes up to this fitting in the back of the throttle body. So if you see this fitting in the back of the throttle body, in between here and here, there's a sensor. If you feel, you can feel the sensor, and then what I did was I actually cut the line up here and right here, I grabbed a, I believe it was a 3 8 hose, and I ran it to a T-fitting, and then I ran that hose to the other side of the T-fitting, and that gave me a vacuum and boost reference. So if you see it, right here on back of the throttle body is the only place you're going to get vacuum and boost setting, or a vacuum and boost reading. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the camera in here, and I'm going to look at it. <clears throat> It's gonna be on a funky angle, but I want you to be able to see what I did. I'm gonna try and hook up uh, so you can get a better view. Okay, sorry for the video quality, but I'm uh, cutting over to my cell phone. I wanna try and get a shot of where I tapped in. Hopefully this looks good. So again, here is the hose, and you'll see on my cell phone, the hose goes to this valve, and then that valve goes around and comes up back here, which is where I tapped in. You see how I have the... You see how I have the rubber hose? And then... That's how I ran it and tapped my boost gauge.
So that's pretty much the only spot you can get a boost in a vacuum reading. And uh, so I just wanted to help uh, some of my crew's buddies who just didn't know where to tap in because a lot of people are trying to put in, uh, you know, boost gauges. Uh, if you're curious, you know, like and subscribe because I have some cool projects coming. Like, I don't know if you see that car over there, but uh, that little car is going to get this big engine to put into it. I think it's going to be fun. Uh, sorry for the mess. I'm knee deep in the middle of putting a differential on my GTO, which will be more footage that's coming out. But uh, like and subscribe, and there's going to be some more turbo stuff coming for the cruise, and there's going to be a big engine going in that little car, and I have some more work being done to this GTO. But uh, you're going to see some cool stuff coming up. But uh, thanks again, everybody. I appreciate everyone who uh, likes, subscribes, and clicks on my videos. And uh, have a nice day.